Welcome to the 500 workshop. Today we're going to be looking at the braking system on this Fiat 500L. This has had change of braking system, so we've got disc brakes on the front, but I'll go through the differences and what they look like as we go through. So we can start at the very front of the car, and here we have the reservoir. Uh, just point to it here, there we go, which holds the brake fluid. Now this is a slightly bigger one uh, than many of them because this is a uh, dual feed. You see it's got two pipes coming out from it. Um, on most uh, 500s it will just have a single one. Um, but those feeds are going into our master cylinder. So they go uh, down here, they go under uh this piece just here and through um the bodywork and under the car so next thing for us to look at is under the car so hopefully you can hear me over the rain which is now coming down it's torrential outside um but here you can see we've got our steering system hopefully you can see that and up through here Hopefully you can see against the kind of wall in here, we have a plate. Now, again, this is slightly different adaptation of what we'd normally have here. And that's because we've got a uh, dual chamber master cylinder. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. But as you put your foot on the brake, that brake activates against this plate and moves a mechanism here which goes and pushes against the face of the master cylinder and we'll try and switch to the other side and have a little bit of a look at the master cylinder now now this angle you can just about see the master cylinder so this is our master cylinder up here and we've got uh, at the very top of it, uh, we've got some uh, our rubber pipes coming in from the, um, the reservoir and connecting at two points. Now, when we put pressure on the plate that I just mentioned, then um, that activates uh, the master cylinder. So that pushes the fluid in the master cylinder and that ends up pushing that brake fluid that's coming from our reservoir into our copper pipes. Now our copper pipes go off in two different directions uh, or three different directions actually. One goes to uh, the left side front brake, one goes to the right side front brake. We'll try and take a look at those in a second. The rain has just died instantly so hopefully you can hear me a bit better. Um, and one goes um, through the car, through the um, the tunnel where you have the uh, gear uh, lever and the handbrake uh, out to the rear of the car. So we'll take a look at the different directions that that goes into. Just so you can see a master cylinder, this is a dual master cylinder, this is spare. So the single one is quite small, it's about that wide. And um, on the single one, uh, this face here goes straight against the um, the foot pedal mechanism. So as you put your foot on, activates straight in there. So it basically pushes uh, into there and pushes the fluid in. Um, this is a double, so the double won't fit in that gap within the within the. Uh, kind of space underneath the car, so it has to be mounted sideways and that bracket mechanism that you saw uh, adapted to take that. Now you've got these little plastic things which will go in uh, one in that slot and one in that slot. Um, and they're taking the fluid from the reservoir. So uh, they're taking your rubber pipes to the reservoir. And then you've got the two up front here uh, which are going to your front brakes, I believe, and this one here, which is going to your rear brake. Now, um, there's a couple of reasons why you do the upgrade, especially if you've got um, 
this breaks. Because uh, it's two chamber, if one fails, you've still got braking, as I understand it. That's what I've been told. And secondly, it produces um, more force, so you get better braking with this, with this dual cylinder setup. Okay, so hopefully in the centre of our shot, you should see our copper pipe. Now, this uh, is coming from the master cylinder and carrying our uh, brake fluid. Um, and as it comes round, it comes round past our suspension down and connects to our flexible hose. And our flexible hose then connects onto our caliper because this is a disc brake system. Um, and that caliper then activates when the brake fluid is pumped through it. Now there is a connection there between the copper pipe and the flexible hose. The copper pipe is obviously static, uh, it doesn't move. Uh, the flexible pipe is flexible and does what it's meant to do. So as your wheel turns and goes up and down and stuff, the flexible pipe takes up that slack uh, and allows us to move around. Okay, hopefully you can see just above the center of our shot here, we have a three-way connector with copper pipe coming out of all the entries and exits. Now the one facing to the right, uh, that's coming through from the master cylinder. That goes, as I mentioned before, through the tunnel where you've got the handbrake inside the car. So that runs through there and comes out of a hole with a load of other things, your fuel, your uh, gearbox uh, connections, um, your accelerator and uh, choke cable are all coming through those holes. So there's also your brake pipe coming out through there. Uh, and that connects, as I said, into the right hand side of this connector. And then you've got two other connections coming off of that. You've got one going to the left, which goes to the left hand rear wheel, and one going up, which uh, goes round um, and to the right hand rear wheel. So again, uh, we're coming out to the left hand uh, wheel here, rear wheel, and that there's the bracket, hopefully you can see in the top uh, left corner, and it's got some hard copper pipe going round, and then it goes into our flexible pipe here. Um, now our flexible pipe here is all about up and down movement rather than uh, steering movement, because we're at the back. Uh, but hopefully you can see the connection a little bit better here. So our flexible pipe um, goes through um, uh, like a rigid fixing on the bodywork um, and then uh, gets uh, the, the copper pipe has a screw end on it uh, which screws into that flexible pipe nice and tight and then um, in order to hopefully maintain it where it is and I'll just come in and zoom in on this one here as well it's got like a uh, let's see if I can point it out just here it's got like a, a tab which you push in um, and that kind of clips it into place so it doesn't move against the the brackets so that's how that's connected there and all these connections obviously have to be really nice and tight so Normally, uh, the copper um, copper tube, uh, if you buy a kit uh, for all these connections, then um, they come with the ends already on. Um, the pipes are all flared at the end, which means they kind of uh, come out a little bit like a mushroom at the end uh, to, to make sure the seal's good. And they already have... Um, these uh, bits with the thread on uh, already pre-done. If you're just buying uh, a re basic copper pipe and you're buying um, these connections yourself, you'll need to put them on the pipe and then flare it yourself. Uh, but I'd recommend buying the pipes because uh, they're all the right size. So we're now looking at our rear right wheel. And uh, we, I haven't followed the pipe all the way around for you, uh, but as I mentioned before, it comes out the top of the uh, three pronged connector, comes round to the suspension on, on the copper cable. Then when it meets the suspension, goes to a flexible cable, 
um, and then back to a copper cable, which then is um, this copper cable just come around here. So you can't see that it's copper. It looks like it's got a spring attached around it, um, but that's just for protection. And then it comes around and it goes into our slave cylinder, which is just here. So uh, because these are drum brakes, has slave cylinders on the rear, um, if we had drum brakes all round, you'd have slave cylinders at the front as well. Uh, but because we've got uh, disc brakes, it goes into the caliper at the front and it goes into the slave cylinder at the rear here. So that's pretty much our braking system. So just a reminder, when you put your foot on the brake, it activates our master cylinder. Uh, in our case on this car, it was activating a, a dual dual master cylinder um, with a bracket on it. Uh, if you've just got the single uh, cylinder, then it just goes straight against uh, the wall of the, the front of the car um, and the brake pedal activates it directly, um, which then in turn pushes the brake fluid around the copper pipes and to their respective calipers or uh, um, slave cylinders uh, and then that activates the brakes and, and stops us. One last thing while we're at the rear of the car here, um, I pointed out our brake line here but also we've got another line here coming to the back of the uh, brake hub and this is our uh, handbrake so this is cable operated so when you pull the lever up uh, you can see it's got kind of a, a similar connection here uh, to, to our uh, other lines, but this is just where you can adjust the tightness of the handbrake by, uh, there's a thread on here, so you can shorten or extend that depending on how much purchase you're getting. So there is some adjustment there. When you pull the lever up, it pulls um, this piece here, uh, which then activates um, a mechanism inside the brakes to push the shoes out against the drum itself. So it's quite a crude, simple system, but it works very effectively. The final piece around the brakes is if you are doing adjustments to it, get some of these uh, proper brake spanners. Now they're different from ordinary spanners. Uh, they're kind of like a open-ended hexagonal spanner. Um, but this on the end here is just enough room for the pipe, the copper pipe to go through and then it gives you a really strong grip around uh, the nut itself. Um, so uh, I think most of them are size 10 um, on these, on, on the copper pipes. Um, so yeah, um, this one's dual headed, so it's got 12 on the other side, but these are invaluable. It means that you get the right purchase, it means you don't ruin the uh, nuts um, or kind of ruin the heads on the nuts. So um, yeah, get yourself some of these. These happen to be Halfords Advanced, so Halfords quickly do them. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you get yourself a good quality set of these.